So here's the sequential switch. Here's the scanner PC board. Not quite done yet, off the assembly line. Today we're going to focus on the scanner and sequential switch. These are two modules that are really pretty uh, similar to each other. They all have three analog switches. And the only real difference is how they're controlled. So you have three ends and one out, or you can have one in and three outs. These go either way. So the only real difference is how these are controlled. And in the case of the sequential switch, it's controlled by a clock pulse, and there's a little sequencer in here that turns one switch on or the other switch on in series. And that's the sequential switch, or the MD2650. Now for the for the scanner, you have a slightly different setup. You have a CV, a control voltage, and that controls the three switches. <coughs> and this is the MD2600 scanner. So as the control voltage rises on this module. As the control voltage rises, the, it switches on, switches in succession. So you have a pulse-driven pulse module and a control voltage-driven module. And they can be bidirectional. And you can run anything through them, audio or control voltages. So these are pretty handy modules. We'll go through some examples of how you can integrate them into your modular system. Okay, one obvious thing you can do is hook up three waveforms from your VCO. And then you can hook this up to your system gate, say from your midiverter. So every time you hit a key on your keyboard, the gate is going to toggle the waveforms in succession. In the scanner, you would hook this up to your ADSR, which would be, you know, gated by your gate. So that over the course of your ADSR, you would get different waveforms. You could also hook up the CV to, say, your velocity output of your midiverter, and that would uh, give you a, uh, you could arrange these waveforms so that the harder you played, the brighter or softer the note, uh, the tonality, the waveform you get. Okay, so here's the select a waveform on the sequential switch. Just hitting one key on the keyboard and we're cycling through pulse, triangle, and sawtooth waves. And here I've added just a little bit of pulse width modulation uh, from an LFO and you didn't have to run it through a attenuator just to get a usable range here. Okay, another thing you can do is just reverse the situation and use one source of control voltage is, say, an LFO, and run that too, and use the outputs 
to modulate, say, a VCO. In this case, you could modulate the FM input, um, which is a very elbow input. You could modulate the pulse width and modulate the wave. And then you could mix the waveform outputs here and uh, in your mixer. And uh, so every time you hit a key on your keyboard or, you know, gated your ADSR or EG1, you would get a different sounding note. Okay, here's one LFO going to three different places. First one will now go to the VC wave control voltage. Then we'll go to the pulse. And then we'll take the third one, go to the FM input for a little frequency shift. Of course we've got the the gate hooked up to our MIDI breeder. Then I'm going to take um, ba, ba, ba. let's take the sawtooth to the mixer. Use your sawtooth. With the FM. So the FM is only happening on one out of three notes. Here's the pulse width modulation. Here's the <clears throat> voltage controlled waveform. all three waveforms turned up on the mixer. Another trick with the sequential switch is to take a VCO and hook the pulse width to the gate and then take any other waveform and hook it to one of the switches and this will give you a divide by three frequency divider. It will kind of look like this. So it retains the original waveform, but only only occurs one third the time of the original waveform. You can also fool around and add another waveform, which will kind of give you. Which will just add that waveform, of course, onto the end. Give you that. So there's some interesting sounding waveforms that you can derive from this. You can also, by using pulse width modulation on the clock, you can change how these sound quite dramatically. This is frequency division. Here we have a sine wave being divided by 3. This is a uh, triangle wave out of the same VCO for reference. And if we uh, adjust the pulse width of the reference pulse, we get some changes here in the wave. We can also plug in another waveform. Let's plug in a saw switch. So now we have sine and saw. And I would bet that's about a, a divide by 1.5. So I hope it gave you a few clues on how to use these modules. Of course there's lots of other ways and lots of variations on what I just showed you. So take some time and enjoy.